get to uh, the fair and we don't have our hair worked right, we don't have um, all of our uh, I's dotted and T's crossed at home uh, by doing all of our homework, uh, that really doesn't matter uh, when we get to the show in terms of trying to play catch up. And so uh, they've got one that's already blown out and washed. Uh, I think it's really important uh, that when you guys are working these things at home that uh, we keep embedded on clean and fresh shavings um, and that we kind of keep those animals um, like at our place we try and rinse them um, uh, two or three times a week just to keep them clean keep them cool especially during the summer and you'll see uh, how that kind of crosses over um, not only for the presentation not only are they going to look fresher and their hair going to be higher quality um, but it, they're going to, especially in the summer when it's hot and they're not stairs. wanting to eat and get after it, if we kind of rinse those things two or three times a week, they're going to be cooler, um, they're going to feel better, they're going to want to go out and eat and perform for you. Um, what we'll do is we'll use soap once a week. And so um, on the shampoo, I don't know if we have shampoos over here. I think there's some in there, I'm not sure what. There we go. Sullivan's makes uh, a couple of really good shampoos. So the volumizer uh, is a shampoo that Sullivan's makes um, that is designed to create healthy hair. It's got a lot of vitamins uh, in it. That's, it's kind of like a high-end shampoo like you get at the salon. Um, and it's designed for livestock um, to make their coats fuller and thicker. And so like this goat, this is one that we're gonna gear up for the state fair um, in later shows. And so you notice, you know, she's not real fat at this stage and her hair is kind of thinner and flatter. Um, hair works on a cycle. And so uh, after about 100 days, somewhere between 100 and 120 days is kind of the peak of your cycle. And so um, we've got this one where she's kind of slicked down and um, going through kind of a molting stage, if you will. And we're gonna start uh, increasing your calories and we're gonna start uh, working her hair more and hopefully by the time August rolls around uh, she'll have really thick luscious just really nice hair that we can kind of carve and basically draw whatever you want uh, if we can get one furry enough but the volumizer shampoo is a really good product um, I'm sure a lot of you guys probably have traditional boar goats um, I think the bright light shampoo works really good on that um, the only thing you have to be careful with this is if you're using it too heavy um, you kind of turn a purple shade and so you don't want to do that on those white animals but it will, if you kind of soak it in there, we'll kind of, we'll use one of those foamers. Um, I don't know if you guys have mm -hmm. one of those in there or not. Yep. Kylie, you. Bottom, isn't it? There we go. This is a really cool product. It's designed where we can kind of pop this off. <laughs> we use this whenever we use soap um, or a conditioner. And you can just pour the soap into this, um, screw it back on. And there's a setting on here and it'll spray out a really even misted foam instead of just putting it in your hand and rubbing it on and allow you to get a real even coat and kind of prevent that purple shade from coming out. So like I said, we'll just use shampoo once a week probably. You don't want to use it every day because it'll kind of dry out your skin and kind of work uh, against you. But um, always basically rinse them from head to toe. Um, and Head to tail and get them completely soaked. And I think it's really important that when you're when you're rinsing them, you're also kind of working that hair in the direction that you want. You can see um, how this is all starting to kind of fall down. When we get some water in there, we'll run a comb through it, kind of work it all back and up, and, and try and get it to where uh, it looks to where the way we want to have it in the show ring. Um, like I said, so that's we'll shampoo once a week, and then anytime we're rinsing, we'll go ahead and put some sort of conditioner back in there. Um, I think it's really important um, when you do use soap that you get all that out. Um, if you leave any residue in there, you'll get kind of some dry skin. Uh, kind of take away from what you shoot from that aspect of things. Um, so that kind of gets super just soaping and kind of washing them. Um, I guess there's, everyone kind of skips past that stage in my opinion. Um, and that's what kind of separates the um, big dogs from everybody else's, whether or not you're being able to get one washed right and dried right. Um, like we said, uh, they've got this one pretty well dry. I don't, I don't think she got washed today, but uh, we got her pretty dry. Um, it's really important when we go to clip that we're getting those completely dry 
if there's any dampness in there, um, the hair's not going to lay the way we want it to when we go to clip them, and it's going to make things really difficult when we go to clip. Um, how many of you guys have clipped the goat before? Anybody? <laughs> nope. Okay. Um, just go over real um, basic clipping on breeding goats because you know, obviously this one's already been clipped out, um, but we're going to kind of tell you what we did here and just go over a couple blade lengths. Um, on their neck, kind of what you'll do is leave the hair on their nose and up here on their head and basically draw a line here on their jaw where you want to start clip all that off and then clip all their chest and neck out and you want to draw basically a 45 degree angle and uh, you can discuss this in like a selection class of some sort but uh, you want a 45 degree angle here on your shoulder that's ideal um, from a structural standpoint and so even if a goat doesn't have that say if they're at the top of their shoulder down to the point of their shoulder is uh, a little more upright we still want to clip that hair in a 45 degree angle and kind of create that illusion uh, and then Another thing that a lot of people um, don't always get quite aggressive enough when they're cutting this line on their neck and they want to stay up here in their wrinkles, it'll make your job a lot easier when you go to blend this. If we go farther back here uh, on their shoulder, what I'll do is I'll find a high spot on their spine here and that's where I'll start clipping and, and peel that out. If we start up here on their neck and leave all this covered up, it's not going to make them look as feminine and extended and attractive. Um, on their necks, what I'll use is either a cover coat blade on a set of shears like what we use on the weathers or this 4F, they make these tapered blades that are basically set to a quarter of an inch, it's called a 4FC and uh, what that'll do is rather than using a guard that'll leave like some lines if we don't go real smoothly, those tapered blades are set to that length and we'll just kind of carve that right out and make it a lot smoother. It won't have lines in it. Um, like I said, you can use a blade like this or um, those cover coat blades work really good. Um, and obviously those are on shears, so they're a lot wider um, of a blade and you get it done a little bit faster. Which direction do you go with Okay, with your good question. <laughs> so I, I would lay this blade in right here on my clippers and go straight, um, basically against the grain, okay? And uh, that's a, another thing too, when you're flipping out this 45 degree angle, a lot of people are going to want to take this blade and go like this. If you kind of lay that blade in and just keep going against the grain instead of kind of going up and around, that's going to make your job a lot easier when you go to blend the things. Uh, just because you're making less of a harsh line to try and get clipped back out of them, if you just kind of lay it in there and gradually peel that off, it's going to make things easier on you. Um, and uh, what we'll also do um, on these, I mean, most livestock nowadays, we want them to run uphill. So um, to kind of create that illusion when we're clipping them, we'll find their navel and we'll use that same 4F blade or a cover coat and peel all that out up into their chest. And that kind of just makes them run uphill more, look more attractive from the side. Um, so that's clipping out their necks. Um, we talked about just blending that back in. And what you'll use is this medium blending blade. Um, and there's, this is probably a deal where you want to switch around how you're um, laying that blade on there. Rather than going against the grain with the blending blade, we'll just kind of drop that in and back drag it to where it gets really smooth there on their shoulder. And obviously, we're not getting one clipped out, but that kind of gives you uh, an illustration of that, I suppose. Um, and then Another thing that we'll do is we'll take that blending blade. Um, if we've already got this clipped out, you can see where there's a clear line here. But a lot of goats will have a bunch of hair in here in their joint. And we'll take that blending blade and we'll just kind of peel all that out. And when we do that, we'll be going against the grain. And uh, you just want to get it to where you draw a line um, in their leg here um, to where they look I mean, bigger ended and more powerful. How much hair do you want to leave down there? Um, if you right, want right. to take it all the way down, or you just want to leave like an inch or so in here in their joint. Yeah, meat. like how far would you take that? Um, it kind of depends on the goat. Um, like on a red goat here, we'll leave a little bit more than we would on a white goat, just because you don't want to get. Basically, you don't want to take it so tight that the color changes and it gets distracting. But you want to get it basically right to that edge before it turns dark or changes to a different pigment. So um, and just looks smooth.
And so that's different on every goat and how thick their hair is. On a thinner haired one, you wouldn't take it quite as short as you would on one that's got like a real nice cashmere fuzz. Um, but can you guys kind of see that line there? They're trying to draw. And basically, before we clip this out, um, I mean, there would have been just hair all over the place in here. So we're going to call it and basically cut that line in there and then carve it and shape it. Just kind of get around, kind of apple butt shape, if you will. Um, another good place to use that blending blade is right here at the top of the hip. A lot of goats will have what we call a jump muscle, um, where the, their hip bones right here will sit up higher than the rest of their body. Um, and you can't really tell on this goat, especially from far away, how it just looks smooth. Um, before we clipped that down, she would have had a bunch of hair sitting up here on her hip bones, and we just kind of back drag that in there. Um, you don't want to get too far ahead or too far back because then you'll be able to see the whole jump muscle again. But if you just kind of lay that on top of those jump muscles, you'll smooth that out and create a nice illusion for you. Uh, kind of hide those things. Uh, when we clip their tails, what we'll do is I'll take that, uh, let me just pull the light out and show it when you. When you're using, when we're clipping on their tails, I think it's good to use a, a blocking blade. A blocking blade is going to be a little bit shorter and tighter than your blending blade would have been. And we'll just pick this tail up. You know, when you have an unclipped goat tail, it'll be big and bushy and sticking out everywhere. And we'll take those clippers and just lay this blade in here against their tail. And just scoop that out. You don't want to go like this because it's a really sharp blade. And if she jumps on you, then it's going to grab her tail and cut her pretty good. But if you lay it in sideways, then that can't happen. Just lay it in there scoop all that out and what you want to do is get this in deep enough down here to where it doesn't look like a straight line from her tail into her butt but where there's kind of like a divot in here and it kind of explodes back out and creates a rounded shape um, there for her leg does that make everything make sense on that um, I guess the, the other big thing to talk about when we're clipping these goats is how to clip their head. Um, when you're clipping, I don't care if it's uh, registered goats or commercial goats, if you're, if you're showing a hair animal on, these, on the goat side of things, it's important that we kind of shoot for a Roman nose. And so we don't want to shear all this hair off of the face. What we'll do is we'll take that blending blade and we'll find the high spot in their head and we'll clip all that off behind it. And that'll basically make it to where it's flat up here and then it creates kind of a rounded contour shape to their head. Um, again, another kind of optical illusion to make the goat look better, I guess. Um, and then another kind of pet peeve of mine um, is that people won't clean out uh, these armpits. I'll get up here with a blending blade and we want to scoop all this out in here. And uh, the reason that we do that is if you kind of like this where it's not clipped out um, she'll look more closed up if you clean out those armpits it's going to make her look bigger chested and wider and more powerful and we use a blending blade for that if you use a blocking blade kind of like what we talked about um, on the tail if you kind of just gouge the skin with those blocking blades or cut them and, and hurt them um, what other question like i said i want to kind of make this more uh, conversational if we can but what kind of questions do you guys have um, on clipping goats? How do you transition from like the bottom of the stomach there up to this side? How do you normally do that for the tubular part of the body? So we're talking right in here? Yeah. So uh, like I talked about, we're going to have that, uh, we're going to try and shear the bottom of the belly out mm -hmm. from her navel all the way forward. and. Uh, I guess when we do that, we don't want to get so far up that it looks like we've got a line on our side. And really, we'll just leave all that um, to kind of, I guess if, if you're just clipping on the bottom here, it's not going to look like you flipped on your side. And so you just kind of leave that line. I, that's what we're, when we're clipping these things, we're just trying to draw lines in them and kind of paint a more vivid picture of the animal, kind of highlight their strong points, if you will. And so kind of what we talked about, kind of for you, Basically, we want all this to be on a straight line, get progressively wider and deeper, but everything to be pretty parallel and uh, 
This is a this is a five speed flipper, and um, I don't know why. Uh, a really smart guy told me that uh, someone asked him why do we have two speeds on our two speeds, and uh, nobody uses the lower speed. They said, and the guy said, uh, "Sure, I do. I use the uh, first speed every day when I turn them on and off." <laughs> and so. Uh, they, they've made them fancy and made it to where you can go to a bunch of different speeds and really I, I turn them on to uh, uh, and go through every speed to get to the top speed and then when I want them off I turn them all the way back down. Uh, I don't really know why they have all the different speeds. But. And generally do they come with most like a bunch of different pins or do you need to buy different No, nope, this is, so if you go to basically any Sullivan's trailer or any supply trailer I suppose, um, they're going to probably be selling these Andis clippers, and typically they'll come with a blending blade or a blocking blade, depending on whichever you choose. They'll come with kind of a complementary set, um, but this is kind of the base of what you get, um, and then we'll just kind of have to acquire um, those new ends. But like I said, if you can get a if you can get a blocking blade and a blending blade, and then whatever you're going to clip their necks with, um, don't need to get too fancy. And basically, you don't need to have a whole lot of different blades to, to make that work. So now do they sell all these blades at like Tractor Supply or Rural King? Um, like a Tractor Supply or Rural King, they'll typically kind of carry your basic blades. So a blending blade and a, and a blocking blade should be available there. Um, I don't, you kind of, depending on your location, they might have the tapered blades and stuff. But, um, for sure, if you get on like Andis's website or one of like Sullivan or Weaver website, um, they should have all those options. Now. How long does it take for the beer to grow back out on the boat? So, and the reason why I ask is, you know, maybe go home and you can practice, practice this weekend yep. and fully have time to, to touch it up, I guess, like, on fair time. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. And that's, like, when we're, when we're showing and going to jackpot shows and stuff, like, a lot of people, um, this time of year, they would get anxious and want to get them out and get them in the ring and get some practice with them. Um, like we showed last weekend, and then if we were going to take goats out this weekend, we'd probably clip them again just to freshen it up. And it kind of depends on um, how much they're eating, what their intake is. Uh, hair has a lot to do with genetics um, as well, and so kind of how fast they grow back will vary from goat to goat. Um, but typically, like I guess you're, to answer your question, if you go clip them here um, in the next week or so, it'll all be grown back, and you know, basically we start from scratch before the fair. This particular goat, um, just kind of going through a hair stage where we, we got rid of the old baby fuzz and you know start back um, getting fresh hair. And I guess that's another thing that we can talk about. There's a lot of different products that they sell um, that kind of encourage hair growth, uh, like a melatonin-based product, um, and they come in all different. There's uh, ones that you can implant them with um, if you're not comfortable drenching them every day with like grow and shine. Um, you can put implants in them. Um, once a month, and that'll kind of do its job. Um, they also make stuff that you can put on top of the feed. Um, there's some people that'll just go to like your Walmart and get like hair, skin, and nails built, and they'll just feed those to them. And so there's a lot of different <laughs> options on that side of stuff to kind of encourage that hair to come in thick and fresh. But I mean, that's all still, I mean, clean and good to go, and um, no worries on like, I mean, it's all within the rules and no issues there, I suppose. Yeah. How long do you normally let that hair grow? Like, or does it 
<laughs> it just depends on the go, but I mean, basically, they're asking like how long we want to yeah, yeah, as long as we can get it. And then, <laughs> kind of clip, I mean, that's that's a double edged sword. We want to get as much hair growth as we can, but then when we go to clip, we don't want to leave so much and so long that it looks disproportional to the animal, if that makes sense. Just because we can get four inches of hair doesn't mean that we need to show us that much hair. Does that, that make sense? Um, I guess going back to your other question about I mean, working leg hair and stuff on these does, um, I'd say where we've gotten to this point um, in the industry, we're kind of showing you know, registered does, commercial does, and the weather is kind of in a similar presentation. Um, and so I guess it's just as important that they're hairy on their body as they are hairy on their legs. Um, and I guess. Uh, there's kind of a crossover between the two segments here because kind of what Evan's going over down there in terms of pulling legs and getting legs fit um, kind of applies to this as well. So on the doze, are you going to blow that out and get that leg hair sticking out like you do on the weathers? Yep. And we, we'll put, a, put adhesive in and get those pulled up and pulled then up and look smooth. On the, the big thing, on, and this is the same kind of across species, when we're showing females versus weathers, um, it's really important once we get those pulled up that we get their joints clipped down to look very feminine and smooth. We don't, like on the weathers, we want to get them just as big and as burly and as stout as we can. I think it's really important on does that we don't just make them big and bushy and massive and we get those clipped in smooth, make them look really smooth here at their, at their knee. And then uh, when we're clipping them in their hock, we'll make sure we take the backside tight, make them smooth down around their ankle also. Are you going to run that tighter? Because you know, just like in our land and you know, weather, you got all that mass and then right. you, there's a lot less blending. We're gonna cut that down a little bit more on the does. On the does, one more refined and smooth. Yep. Any okay. other questions? I guess that's one thing. If uh, if we don't have any more questions over here, we can all jump down there, and while they're clipping on those fitted legs, we can ask some questions and go over that as well. Mm -hmm. Kind of talk about the differences between what we're doing on uh, on a weather versus what we would on a doe and things like that. Yep. Okay.